Hey everyone, Bob and Audie Kieber here. So, you want to learn notation on the four-dimensional Rubik's Cube. So in this video, I'll go over some already existing notations and one that I invented myself that I think is better, but like, I don't mean to be like super biased or anything. <laughs> So a four-dimensional Rubik's Cube is a little bit different from a normal Rubik's Cube. Instead of having squares on each side, it has cubes on each side. So these are called cells. And it has almost the same notation as this. So there's just two extra sides, because on four dimensions there's eight sides. So each cell basically gets the same name as normal 3x3. This cell is the R cell, or R cube. So this is R, this is the L, F. The one back here is B, this one up here is U, and the yellow down here is D. And then the extra two, top, so this is called top. And then the one that you can't see that's hidden is called kata, which is from a language that I don't speak. And there's also a different notation. I'm not sure who invented this. You can also use I for inside. So this would be the inside cube. And then the one that we can't see would be the outside cube or O. So those are the letters. So kind of like three by three, U, D, R, L, etc. So I think one of the very first notation systems is called Royce's notation. So what Royce did was label every single sticker on the hypercube with a number. So it's from this like front orientation. So it would always be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then the row behind it, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and then this row, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So there's 27 stick, uh, 3D stickers on a cell of a hypercube. So all those get numbers. And then first you say the name of the side. So if we're gonna turn the top side around sticker nine and we right click, the notation for that would be top nine right. Um, it's pretty long. It's like you need two words and a number separated by commas in order to do figure out one turn. So the next notation is Ray Zhao's notation or just Zhao notation. So I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Let me know if I pronounced that wrong. So in Zhao notation, each turn is denoted by a two color piece click. So even if you do um, one of these edge twists, you know, that's the equivalent of like this and then that so you can do everything in just two two color piece twist yeah so the first letter is which cell to click on and the second letter is which adjacent cell next to it that sticker borders so if you had tu that means to click on the top cell on the two color sticker that meets the up cell this would be clockwise and then this would be prime and then this would be two sort of like like U, U prime, U two sort of thing. Um, you can have things like R, K. So here's the R cell, the K cell is the one that we can't see. So you just right click there. And then if you wanted to do like a corner twist, you could do something like T, R prime like that. And then you could also do the next one as T, U prime. So just do that in two moves instead of using these cool corner twist moves. And then a little bit after that, some people decided to I changed that to have a notation for these sort of twists. So the way they did that was to just name the piece. So this is the T-U-R edge right here. So they would just write T-U-R and then put the U-R in square brackets so that you would know to click on the T of the T-U-R. Because if you click on the U of T-U-R, it's different than clicking on the T sticker of T-U-R. And same thing for the corners. So right here, this would be the U-T-F-R corner. So if you wanted to click on the um, F of that, so you put F square brackets U-T-R, and then that'd be that move. And then there's also prime. So besides that, there's really only one more notation that's kind of sort of used, even though no one really like uses it, but it's kind of a thing that still exists. On a three-dimensional cube, each side's a square, and obviously to do a move, you turn the top so that the square is realigned with the other squares. So one dimension higher, each side is a cube, so it's just rotations of the cube is a move, just like rotating this square in 2D space is a move. So rotating a cell 
in 3D space is a move on the hypercube, right? So you can use 3D rotations like Y, Y prime, X, X prime, Z, Z prime, if you're familiar with rotation notation. So for example, if you wanted to rotate the R cell and give it a Y move, a Y move is like doing U but with all the layers, so it's like a rotation like this. Then we could right click on this sticker right here and that would rotate, watch the right cube as it rotates like that. So that's rotating the right cube. So the notation would be R and then lowercase y because we're taking the R cell and giving it a Y rotation. For another example, let's say we wanted to undo this corner twist move. We'd have to string two rotations together in a row. So we could write TX, which is giving the top cell an X rotation, and then TY, which is giving the top cell a Y rotation. So that's how you do those. And then for an edge twist, for example, here you could do something like TZ prime and then TY2 to do that. So you have to string those two together, which makes it longer. And then this is where I came along and decided to try and make my own notation system. So this started like about a month or two ago. And before this, I'm pretty sure no one had made any attempts to try and figure out all the different slice moves. So I think I'm the first to do that, but maybe not. Someone's probably done that, who knows. There is 24 ways a cube can be rotated in 3D space, right? Because you can have any of six faces on top and then another four faces in front, all the different types of rotations. Six times four is equal to 24. So there's 24 different rotations. And then I thought, hey, there's 26 letters in the alphabet. What if we map each of those rotations to a letter in the alphabet? But then it got even better because each two letters would be the same because like if you rotate around this cell, it's the same as rotating around this cell, it does the same thing. That cuts the alphabet in half. So 26 divided by two is 13. We only need 13 letters. And so I looked up how many axes of symmetry a cube has in three dimensions and turned out to also be 13. So I was pretty sure I was on the right track there. And what do I mean when I say axis of symmetry? Basically, imagine a one dimensional line going through the cube. How many axes of symmetry does it have? So obviously there's the three directions like the Y axis, X axis, and the Z axis, right? And then the next six are when you combine those. There's an axis this way that rotates the cube around these two edges, right? And then after that, there's four more corner rotations of symmetry. So there's this corner to this corner, rotation of symmetry, here to here, here to here, and here to there. So those are the 13 different axes of symmetry. So what I did is give each one a lowercase letter. So just take the letter of the cell you want to do that to, and then put the lowercase letter after that, and that's the new notation. The pros of this is that it's shorter than Zhao notation when you're talking about corner rotations and edge flips. So it's like a few letters shorter on average, so that's pretty cool. And it's actually less confusing because things go the same direction. So on a three by three, F and B go different directions, and then R and L go different directions, and that's like kind of confusing. On mine, because it's rotations, you know, giving this cube an X rotation is like the same as giving this cube an X rotation. All right, so now let's go over all the moves in my notation system, uh, which I'm calling blob notation or blob naughty notation, I don't know. So let's just do everything on the T cell right here. It'll be less confusing because we can see all the sides surrounding the T cell. The first three, which is gonna be lowercase a, b, and c, are going to be the normal side axes. So from a center to a center on a three by three. A is going to refer to clockwise turning of the U and D axis, so like the Y axis basically. So this is going to be A, and then this would be A prime, and then there's A2. B is going to be rotating the cube around a left to right axis, which is like an X rotation. So this is B, B2, and then B prime. And then C is going to be the front to back axis, which is going to be like a Z rotation. So that's C, C prime and then C2. And now for the edge axes, so lowercase d is going to be from this to this axis. So that's either clicking on this or clicking on this. And for edge twist, it actually doesn't matter, uh, matter prime or two, doesn't matter. So 
The next one is E, which is from here, oops, which is from here to here. So like that down, down the middle from here to here, which is either clicking on this or clicking on this one, which is the edge down there. So that's E. F is clicking from this one to this one. So it's this axis through a cube. So either like that or like that. And then G is the other one, which is from this upper left to this bottom right one. So either like this or like that. And then H is from here to this one. So kind of like in the E layer of this cube, either this or that, so that's H. And then the last edge to edge one is I, which is this to this. And then we get into the corner twist. So there's only four of those, so it should go a little faster. So the first one we have is J, which is from this up back left corner to the like down front right corner. So it's from the way that you're looking at it. So if I'm looking at it from this way, this would be like J because it's clockwise. This would be J prime. And then J2 is the same as, um, like J, and then from this corner, if we right click on it, it does a J prime, even though we're right clicking on it, which usually goes clockwise. So it's kind of from the way you're looking at it. So it's so it's a little weird, but yeah. And then K is and the axis from this corner to this corner. So you could either like click on this or click on that. L is going to be from here to this corner back here. So this is L, L prime. And then finally, M is from this corner to this corner. So that's either clicking like that or clicking like that. So that's how you string all the 3D rotations into only two letters, which is pretty cool. So let's just say, for example, we had like R, E, right? So that means the right cell and E in my notation means flipping the cube along the U, R to like D, L axis. So that would be that. And then all of these work for all the things, except for the outside cell or K, if you want to call it that, because you can't click on K. And then now for the slice moves. So on a three dimensional cube, there's six sides. So that means that there's three slices, one in between each side. So you got the S slice in between F and B, the E slice in between U and D, and the M slice in between L and R. The same exact thing happens on the 4D cube, right? So you have M, which is in between the left cell and right cell. And then you have S, which is in between the front and back cells. And then E, which is in between the up and down cell. But there's actually one more because there's two more sides. So what slice is in between the out, the inside and outside cell or top and kata? It's a new slice. What letter did I give this? I gave it P. This is P. So it's a slice in between inside cube and outside cube. If we do it from this angle, it's Sort of like that. The thing about slice moves in four dimensions is there's actually three types of each slice move, so it just gets more complicated. There's a standard sort of M move like that that you can do, which is the same thing, but there's actually also another type or two more types of M moves. There's this type, which is like moving the M slice up, <laughs> which is pretty cool. And then this one, which is like moving the M slice in, which is also pretty cool. So I just gave the same rotations in my notation to the slices. So the standard one would actually be MB because B in my notation means rotating from the left to right axis, which is the same sticker that we're clicking on if we just did um, RB, but MB is like clicking on the same thing. And then this type of M move is MA and then this is like M A prime. And then the final one is M C. So, yep, three types of slice moves. And then this would be P A. So the P slice in A, which is like a Y rotation of the P slice. And then this is P B, which P B, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then of course we have P C. And then you actually can do the other ones too. So this would be like P M. So there's, there's a lot of combinations. And wide moves work the same as in normal notation. You just add a lowercase w to the end. So something like this would be rb wide. So that's rb wide. And then you could also do like, you could also do like ta wide. So for a 4D rotation, all you need is the cell. So let's say F and then just put capital W instead of lowercase w because lowercase w means wide move. So then capital W means to rotate that cell into the center. So FW means to rotate the F cell 
into the center cell, which is um, T or I. So that's like that. And then um, let's say UW is putting this to there. So like that, so those are four dimensional rotations, but I think that's pretty much it. So there's more things to learn obviously than um, 3D Rubik's Cube notation because you know, it's just like more complicated, but it's not actually that much. Just 13 letters, some new rotations and slices. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you know uh, different notations for the hypercube now. Which notation do you like the best? Leave it in the comments leave a like. Thanks for watching this video. Have a good day.